Hello again YouTube and I'm back with a video, uh, another video. And this video is in the, in the realm of a public service message for some folks that had some questions and some comments about uh, nickel iron batteries and venting. And I just answered a comment uh, from a viewer and uh, about, you know, he heard that nickel iron batteries, you know, he heard that they didn't need to be vented. And I heard the same thing, um, and uh, you know, and there there's some, some caveats to that statement. But first of all, let's talk about these nickel iron batteries for folks that uh, may have not seen my earlier videos and they're kind of curious about these batteries. And I'm going to talk about them. These are nickel iron batteries that came from China. I purchased these batteries from a uh, distributor, a U.S. distributor. Uh, by the name of B Utility Free. Now, if you look on the net, there's a lot of you know controversy and stuff like that dealing with the, with this particular distributor. But the thing about it is, you know, I ordered the batteries, I paid the money, the batteries arrived. So for all intents and purposes, you know, he lived up to his, the, you know, the company that distributor lived up to their end of the bargain. So I don't really care about you know all the other stuff and you know dealing with these batteries, dealing with nickel iron batteries and um, you know and whether or not it's like well you should go to this distributor or not. I chose the distributor and the guy lived up to you know my my expectation. I mean he the, the, the batteries took a while to get here but you know they did come from China. So uh, again they, they've been here and I've put these batteries to the test. I mean I, I was off grid uh, today for from around 7:45, close to 8 o'clock in the morning till about 5 or 6 in the afternoon and you know completely off grid all day with my solar my three kilowatts of solar and I mean you know it was it was fine I ran my blender I ran you know microwave I mean you could run whatever so these batteries work fine now let's talk about these batteries they are nickel iron batteries the electrolyte in these batteries are uh, potassium hydroxide, okay? Potassium hydroxide and water, all right? And there may be some lithium hydroxide, you know, uh, mixed in to kind of make the batteries more efficient. But for the most part, these are alkaline batteries and they are, you know, and the electrolyte is potassium hydroxide. Each one of these cells, there are, I have 20 cells, but I'm only using 19. And I'm using 19 cells because of the charging characteristics. Um, this particular inverter will only charge up to so uh, you know so high, actually around 30, uh, 32 volts. So in order to get the the charging characteristics characteristics that I need to make sure each one of these cells gets charged appropriately, I had to reduce the cell count by one. So I'm using 19 as opposed to 20. Uh, it is a 24 volt uh, base system. However, my batteries, uh, when they are being charged, they will charge, I, will, I have to charge them up to 31.3 volts. Each one of these cells is a 1.2 volt nominal cell. However, each one of these cells has to be charged at a voltage of 1.65 volts per cell. If you multiply that by 19, you'll get uh, around 31.3 volts. So if you got th if you're charging these batteries up at around 31.3 volts, then you can be sure that each one of these cells is being charged at 1.65 volts. Now, for these cells to be in float mode, then the cells each cell has to be held at a float charge of 1.45 volts per cell and that comes up to be 27.5 volts for 19 cells so if you got if you're float charging these cells at 27.5 in my case I'm doing 27.6 then you can know you can be sure that each one of these cells is being float charged appropriately now as far as venting, under normal circumstances, these batteries are kept in a in an area where there's a lot of room, there's a lot of storage, uh, basically a large room uh, with a lot of clearance, head clearance, you know, ceiling clearance, and so uh, you know, with the nooks and crannies, the cracks and everything, 
there's very, you know, very little chance for hydrogen to congregate in one particular area to hydrogen and oxygen so to form an explosion risk. So under normal circumstances, if these batteries are, are in a, a well-ventilated storage area, we're talking, you know, a big battery room um, with, you know, again, a lot of clearance and a lot of, you know, decent, you know, <laughs> decent air uh, airflow, then yes, okay, you can say, well, these batteries don't need to be vented. However, in a room such as this, where it's like eight by 10, okay, and you know, I got the little ceiling vent there and, and there's the possibility that this, you know, th these batteries are not getting some decent airflow. Um, there is the possibility that some, some hydrogen and oxygen can congregate and cause an explosion risk. Okay, the risk was minimal, however, um, I'm not willing to take that chance. So that's why I put, you know, that little vent there. Now, one of the key things that I also did was today I actually in installed this little fan. I just kind of mounted it to the to the vent, and its its purpose is to blow air or uh, suck air in from the outside and blow it into the room. And therefore, when it blow and it blows across the batteries, and also uh, as it blows air fresh air into the room, the air will be pushed out through that particular vent. So again, did I have to do that? Probably not, but hey, why take the chance? I had an old fan from, you know, that I've been using for a while and, you know, and I took some, I got some, uh, some wire and I just kind of mounted it there. The entire mounting process took me probably about five or 10 minutes. Okay. And I just plugged it in right there to a handy dandy socket that I had up there near my system. So it works, it works fine. Um, again, uh, with these nickel iron batteries, you know, um, they, I mean, they work great. Uh, I mean, I've been using them quite a bit. I mean, I can use them during the day. I can use them during the night. Um, with this, uh, my capacitor bank. Now, I have discovered with this capacitor bank. Now, with this capacitor bank, I mean, it handles surge currents beautifully. Okay, I can... I can I have a Vitamix blender and I can run that thing with no problem and not only that but I can you know microwaves uh, washers you know a hey, no big deal however I'm still trying to tweak it so that you know um, you know maybe it tweak my setup so that you know around five or six o'clock in the morning you know um, you know the system won't go down because you know the refrigerator and the freezer came on at the same time now this capacitor bank one thing that i've discovered the capacitor bank does have help you with power density but you know with energy density it's still the same thing okay it's still the same thing so what i'm saying is with power density you know i get the amps that i need but you know the energy density is the storage of the energy in the battery bank Ultra capacitors are not very high in energy density. They are high in power density. So they give you the surge uh, that you need when you need it. Uh, so I still need to kind of work on that. So the bottom line is, you know, whatever storage capacity you've got in your battery bank, that's what you've got. So, you know, at the end when, you know, you're down to like 19 volts or when I'm down to 19 volts or whatever, then yeah, that's, you know, that's it. <laughs> okay, it is what it is. So if I, but I've got a plan to where I can kind of factor certain things in so that I won't have to deal with uh, the refrigerator kicking off and stuff like that. Now, again, um, the, you know, this thing right here, the, the ultra capacitors work great for the power as far as giving that surge capacity that you need. However, again, you, you only have enough store, you only have the storage capacity that you have. All right, now, um, Let's see what else. Um, and again, with these nickel iron batteries, um, as far as charging and gassing, um, these batteries under normal circumstances, when you're charging the battery, uh, when it's like at 10% state of charge, going up to maybe like 80% state of charge, they, these batteries, you know, they don't really gas. They either, they gas very little or none at all. Um, however, when you get to the final charging stages, uh, such as 80% and higher when you're in absorb mode and you're going you're finishing up absorb mode and you're going into float mode Then yes, it will gas these batteries will gas and it will it will be indicated uh, By when you if you were standing in this room, you'll hit you will hear, you know a hissing sound It's like a whole bunch of snakes in here. Okay, <laughs> you know I, um, essentially 
yeah, that's when you know it's gassing because they will, these batteries will start hissing. And if you look at the, you know, if you look down at like, I, I all of these are see-through so I can see the water level. And you can literally see little bubbles forming, you know, and which, you know, indicates gas being formed, floating to the top and being released. So yes, these, ba these batteries do gas, okay? Um, now, the gas is not toxic because it's just hydrogen and oxygen. We breathe that, we drink that, so it's no big deal. Unfortunately, hydrogen and oxygen together makes an explosive mixture, so we have to vent that. Okay, again, as I'm saying, um, these batteries do gas at the final, during, during the final stages, during the final stages of, uh, of charging. So hopefully, you know, you folks uh, out there, have, they have, you have a better understanding of nickel iron batteries. Um, you know, and, and I'm here to tell you, I mean, hey, I, these things are great. They work. Yes, they do. And they, you know, you can, I mean, I've been using them and they do honestly work um, for off-grid operations. I mean, I was off-grid all day today, um, distilling water on my, I had two computer servers running, some ceiling fans, um, you name it. Uh, I was, I was using it. I mean, I, you know, some lights were on, you know, hey, you know, I was off grid from eight o'clock in the morning, uh, to, well, for, well, actually around 7.50, 7.45 till about almost like five o'clock in the afternoon. Yes, I was off grid and loving it and absolutely loving it. But anyway, um, anyway, this fan right here is, it's one of those little fans I got from Walmart or our truck stop or something. And it's a pretty cheap fan, you know, it's 120 volts. Um, I noticed on some of the other videos from uh, uh, some of my uh, other uh, YouTube compadres uh, that are doing solar, um, you're using computer fans, which is fine, hey, it's a fan, it's, you know, it's 12 volt, 24 volt or something like that. Uh, this right here, I decided to go with the, uh, it's an AC, it's a AC type fan and just simply plug it in and you're good to go. I gotta get another one because, you know, it's always good to have a spare. Uh, but anyway, it works great. I mean, I can feel it, you know, I, you know, you feel it here, 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 all the way out to about here. Okay. I can feel it. It's, you know, it's not a super, it doesn't, it's not blowing out super air, but it's enough to get air into this room and enough for, you know, um, you know, this thing to not be chirping. <laughs> okay. But okay. YouTube, hopefully that helped with some, in, uh, some better explanations for some folks. And, uh, you know, if you have any questions, comments, issues or whatever, you know, feel free to leave a comment. Take care.